Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Jack Hutchison and I'm the Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer here at Winnebago Area Health Authority. I will be moderating today's remarks. Today we meet again to discuss our redevelopment project and I would like to begin by acknowledging our board members who were able to join us today. Pauline Sackany, our Vice Chair, representing Moosonee, and Grace Delaney, representing Mo Quebec. We also acknowledge that this is a territory and customary uh, traditional lands of Moose Cree First Nations since time immemorial. We acknowledge the sacred land on which our hospital operates within the lands protected by the James Bay Treaty, Treaty Number no. 9. We're grateful to have the opportunity to provide care in these lands. Let us also acknowledge the people that have come before us, who are here now, and those who will come after us. Before we begin this event, I would like to welcome Pauline Rickard to open us in prayer. Pauline is a counselor for Moose Cree First Nation and an over 40-year employee here at Waha. She is also the president of the local PSAC bargaining unit, representing the majority of our staff. Please welcome Pauline. Good afternoon, Waje. Thank you, Jack. My name is Pauline Mary Rebecca Rickard. My parents are Abraham and Mary Rickard. I've lived here all my life, and it seems like I've worked here for more than half my life. Um, I've been asked to open in prayer, and I just want to explain a little bit about what prayer means to us as a Lilowag. It is not mere words that we recite uh, from time to time. It's not the hurried and harried prayer when crisis and tragedy strike. It is a way of life. It is an attitude. It is ceremony. Um, our people have always... Uh, acknowledge the Creator, Kichimandu, God, from the rising of the sun to the setting down of the same, and everything in between, whether they worked, whether they harvested, provided for their families, provided for one another, took care of one another. So much it encompasses, and from a very young age, um, I've been very fortunate in that my parents, my family taught me that there's a higher power that um, we always acknowledge and make our plans with him in mind so that they are blessed and that they run well. Our hospital um, is a building. As you can tell, it's falling apart, this one anyway, and plans are in place for a new one. And the delivery of healthcare, healthcare services is not a building. It's, it's what we all strive for. The, we all want what's best for the patient, and that's why we're here. That's why I've been able to work for many, many years. Um, I acknowledge the patients that we've looked after, many hundreds, and the staff, the people who built this hospital. I would like to take a moment and just remember them and honor them. They worked in conditions that were very dangerous, are considered very dangerous, and um, today we're in a unionized environment where our people can work in a safe place. So at this moment, I will open in prayer as our people have since time immemorial. <laughs> Creator God. Gen and ask me in a bed to show Elimia cannot shake Shagak, Goyas Gibijan and Nagachiak. In Del Tagon Oshke Agusigum Jamatig, Jagamadane Eoxigig Mischedwehano de Dehelagiritanuk, Gadashi Hedgig Puanikos Jug. Atawapaskat, Kasachuan, Fort Albany, Moosini, Moose Factory, Kalstok Agashich, where our employees work. 
Good wee job, a seam cake. Go ahead, Skaga, keep on selling them, and then you be able to do it, and you know. Oh, shke. I'll be this one, so I'm going to get on. And they'll talk and get a guy with a bug in the head, or surely animal, or they'll take a lot. Mom, it's in the morning, we do the work. Shago, Jaga, Gila, Garbage, get the best you can. Gila, Dibble, and a great job, and then. Grace to be most of you, Noma. Get the same castle, or then they am chicken. Yes, any man we watch. Thank you, Pauline. I now ask Lynn Innes, our President and Chief Executive Officer, to share some words. Thank you, Jack. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, for gathering with us today, and miigwech to Pauline for the blessing. I want to thank Grand Chief Friday from Meshkegawak Council for joining us today, along with the Chief of Moose Cree First Nation, Peter Wesley, Chief of Mokrebeck, Alan Jolly, and Mayor of Moosonee, Wayne Typla. Our board chair, Carmen Tozer, asked me to pass on his regrets. It is my pleasure to be here in my traditional territory, Moose Cree First Nation. Today, I'm cautiously optimistic. Since our press conference last week, I have some infor information to share. Yesterday, Waha received a letter from the Prime Minister reaffirming his government's commitment to our redevelopment project. This is a hopeful step forward for the future health and well being of the people in our region. The Prime Minister's commitment shows that our voices have been heard and that the federal government recognizes the critical need for modern and culturally safe health care facilities in our region. This pledge aligns with the promises made under the Winnebago Area Health Integration Framework and underscores the importance of addressing Indigenous health care disparities. However, while this letter is significant, there is still much work to be done. I will continue to hold the federal government accountable for funding 45% of the cost to build our new health campus as they agreed to in 2007. Our flagship facility, the Winnebago General Hospital and Moose Factory, built in 1950, is the oldest unrenovated hospital in Canada. It was built to be a tuberculosis sanatorium where countless children from Northern Ontario were taken from their communities and infirmed in an isolated facility on an island away from their families, their homeland, language, and culture. This building is a symbol of the enduring colonial legacy that our people live with every day. In the coming days and weeks, I will seek clarity from the federal government on specific timelines and financial details associated with this commitment to ensure that the next phase of construction can begin without further delay. Even though we have received this letter from the Prime Minister, I remain committed to be vigilant and continuing to advocate for our region. I will keep open lines of communication with federal officials and provide updates on our progress as they become available. I will ensure to keep everyone informed about any develop developments and next steps, ensuring that everyone understands the significance of this commitment and how, we'll, how we will move forward together. To Prime Minister Trudeau, we appreciate your reaffirmment and commitment to our hospital. This is a vital step towards ensuring the health and safety and dignity of our communities. We look forward to working closely with your government to bring this project to fruition. To everyone here today, thank you for your unwavering support and dedication. Together, we will continue to strive for a future where our communities receive the health care they deserve free from the shadows of the colonial legacy. Miigwech. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. At this time, we welcome Grand Chief of Mishkegawa Council, Leo Friday. Wachiyaka misawe kapehtamek hannusche baachamwen nimechilwezen mina Uteni Boyan, 
As a Grand Chief of the Muskegua Council, I wish to acknowledge the people <clears throat> and leadership of Moose Factory First Nation on those territory we are standing. Moose Cree has a long history of fighting for the treaty rights, the quality health care. I would also like to thank the leadership and representatives of the other Muskegua First Nations here today. The issues here are very clear and the solutions are also very clear. But a lot of us, and I am certain as well, that once again, we have to call on the government to reaffirm their complete commitment outlined in the WAWIFA agreement to find 45% of the total cost of the project. Last week, my team and many partners across Ontario have sent letters to the Minister of Indigenous Services, Paddy, we received replies, however, in her response, she did not make a clear commitment to Canada, agreed upon contribution. <clears throat> frankly, frankly, her response did not address the concerns we had at all expected. I am happy that Lynn and I'd receive a response from the Prime Minister making a commitment to continue to move this project forward. We all <clears throat> thank him for making that clear. And I know in discussion with the Prime Minister's office that Waha and our region will settle for no less then Canada providing their full contribution. We should never have had to resort to this. I have been in countless meetings with Indigenous Services Canada, Ontario Ministry of Health, and the leadership team at Waha, where this project is discussed. Cost and requirement of all parties are clearly outlined, and at no point did Canada ever indicate that they would not be moving forward. The team representing Canada 
at this meeting must be better to ensure that they are meeting their submission, timelines, and communicating clearly to all parties in our planning, as well as to their minister to ensure that issues like this do not happen again. I have just had a tour of this facility with Lynn and her team, and I applaud. They have done a remarkable job at keeping this space open, safe, and accessible. But in no other place in Canada would an, would an institution like this be acceptable. The conditions the, that our people have to receive care in and that our providers have to work in would not be acceptable. So in closing, I am optimistic about the letter that Lynn and her team received confirming that Canada remain committed, but it is still unacceptable that we have to get to this point. And I look forward to hearing from the Minister of Indigenous Services Canada on their plan to ensure that this sort of issue does not happen again, especially during the next few years of construction. And furthermore, Mr. Prime Minister, we are coming to your hell and parliament, rallying for the true commitment on June 19th, 2024. The rally and the voices of our people will be there. In closing, thanks to all of you that listen and hear. Thanks. Thank you, Grand Chief Friday. I would now ask you to join me in welcoming Chief of Moose Cree First Nation, Peter Wesley, to provide remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to be here today. I welcome you to the traditional ter ter territory of Moose Cree First Nation. It's uh, unfortunate that we have to be here again, like one more time to call upon Canada to honor its commitment to the First Nations of this territory, to the treaty holders of Treaty Number 9. Prime Minister Trudeau, we are in receipt of your letter. We thank you for that, but it, it lacks concrete commitment. You acknowledge your, that you continue to work with us but it does not give us concrete answers. It, it does not provide us the answers we are looking for. And we call upon you once again to honor your commitment to your treaty partners. I had an opportunity moments ago to tour the facility. And as I reflected as we were walking along, I was privileged to have my daughter born here and also to have Family members leave us as well in this hospital, go through the entire life cycle. And being accustomed to coming here daily sometimes, up today gave me an opportunity to see, to see it through fresh eyes, to see how dilapidated this building is, how much dire work it needs a replacement is what it needs. And as a treaty partner, we have a right to health care. And we cannot provide health care without a new building. We need better health care, better health services. And to do that, we need a new facility. And Prime Minister, Canada, Prime Minister of Canada, at our, last, at our last Prince Conference, I invited you 
to come to our community to see you for yourself and have not received a response to that invitation. And as Grand Chief Leo said, if you, not, if you will not come to our home, we will come to yours. We are coming June 19th to Ottawa to hear from you personally, Prime Minister Canada, Prime Minister Trudeau. As I said, we need you to step up and honor your commitments to your treaty partners. This is a treaty issue and it requires a treaty table between treaty partners. Canada, you're still missing. Where are you? We need you to speak up. We need you to be here. We need you to honor your commitment. And we shall see you on June 19th. And more often, if need be, until you commit to a new building, a new hospital, a new health care for, for your treaty partners, for the people of the James Bay Coast. Miigwech. Thank you, Chief Wesley. At this time, we welcome Mayor Wayne Taipla of Moosonee. Thank you, Jack. It's um, quite a shock for me to be here today. Um, as I've been a resident of Moosonee for over 65 years, I've worked in all the communities north of Moosonee. I was also part of the negotiation team with the federal government, the provincial government, and the uh, communities negotiating the Wahifa Agreement. When the five communities signed the Wahifa Agreement, along with the provincial government, the federal government, it was acknowledged at that time and agreed upon. And the signatories stated that the federal government would provide 45% of all capital. It also said that the province would do 55%. Now, it is very disappointing that I'm here today, just to speak on it, to uh, find out that the federal government might be holding back on it. Thank you, Prime Minister Trudeau, for your letter yesterday. It gives me more hope now than, than it did before. I would just encourage everybody, all governments, to work together with us to get the new campus built. It has already been started. This hospital, we just had a tour of it again today, and it is in real bad shape. It has to be replaced. We were starting to replace it, and back in 2000, when we started to work on the Wahipa Agreement, it was noted then, that's 24 years that has gone by, that this place is getting worse. So I urge all the governments, both the provincial and the federal government, come to the table, put the funding forward, make sure we know it's there so we can move forward and get the new campus in place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Taipala. So in closing, on behalf of our entire executive leadership team, we thank all of our staff at Waha for their dedication and commitment to our patients and our region. Despite the situation, they have been resilient and steadfast in their dedication to fulfilling our mission to provide optimum health care as close to home as possible. Thank you. Miigwech.